where the Dolphins are in their contract negotiations with, with Tua Tonga Valoa. Um, obviously, the deal hasn't gotten done yet. Well, otherwise, we would have seen some smoke signals coming from Miami Gardens facility. Um, the Dolphins have been in a longstanding negotiation with Tua Tonga Valoa and his camp to try to get a multi year deal done uh, that pays him compensatory to where he stands in the NFL hierarchy of quarterbacks. Um, I would argue to you that Tua is arguably the 13th best quarterback in the NFL, maybe because of his age, wants to get paid like a top 10 quarterback. And he certainly wants to be compensated like his peers. Um, there are about seven quarterbacks who are now in the $50 million a year club or allegedly $50 million a year club. And Tua wants to get in there on a new deal. Now, one of the new quarterbacks entering the $50 million club is Jacksonville Jaguars quarterback, Trevor Lawrence. Now, Last night, Trevor Lawrence, who was who is entering the final year of his rookie deal. He's not even on his fifth year option like Tua Tonga Vailoa is. But he got a multi-year deal done with the Jacksonville Jaguars. That will be a five-year extension that allegedly pays him $275 million, which includes $200 million in guaranteed money, $142 million of it at the signing. Now, obviously, this is what is being reported. And I take uh, what is being reported uh, with a cautious approach because usually, especially when it's an agent just telling their mouthpieces of the NFL what the deals are, when you finally read the fine print, what you learn is that it's really a seven-year deal for Trevor Lawrence, which includes his fourth his rookie his rookie salary this year, which includes his fifth year option, and then includes the five years for two hundred and seventy-five million dollars. Um, you have to know the details of the deal, the, the, the details are where it's all at um, in order to be able to evaluate the contract. And we don't have those details at the present moment. But what we do know is that Trevor Lawrence allegedly walked away with $142 million at signing, which is understandable and reasonable. That's compensatory to what his peers are making. And $200 million in, in guarantees, which are including an injury guarantee. It's easy to guarantee injury in probably the 2027 season or or I'm just giving you an exaggeration. Um, it sort of fits in the line of the Jared, uh, the, the Justin Herbert deal. Um, when you look at Justin Herbert's deal, he got a seven year deal for three hundred million dollars, one hundred and thirty three point seven fully guaranteed, one hundred ninety three point seven guaranteed for injury. Yada, 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 um, if you know the Seinfeld reference. Um, it's w while I don't want to get fixated on the numbers, here's what the, the nuts and bolts of the situation is. I've always said this offseason that the sooner Miami gets the deal done with Tua, the better off they will be as an organization because every quarterback that signs raises the price. Um, if you know... All of these quarterback agents, and usually all of the agents, they work in unison together. And they're not, they're, they're a team to ensure that the position continues to go up and somebody doesn't sign a deal that deflates the market. Now, markets have been deflated at different positions before. However, quarterback just so happens to be a market that probably will never get deflated because there's arguably 15 quarterbacks that are good for 32 teams teams are jockeying for those quarterbacks and look at kirk cousins situation as a perfect example kirk cousins got a 45 million dollar a year salary 100 million dollar in guaranteed money coming off an achilles injury where he didn't play an entire season and he's advanced 30s he's in his 30s now that's what a quarterback who hits the open market gets um we could potentially be testing that as well, not only with Tua Tonga Valoa, um, but also with Dak Prescott. The last thing that the NFL wants to do is to let a quarterback hit the open market. But then it seems like what the Dolphins don't want to do is pay market price for their quarterback who they claim that they love. And here's Tua in his own words talking about where the quarterback landscape from contract standpoints seems to be. Did you think there'd be more progress at this point? In the well, I think there's been a lot of progress at this point. Uh, from where we started, there's been a lot of progress. Now, you know, you can ask the other question, then why aren't we seeing, you know, an agreement? 
Well, that's the tough part about it. That's why it's it's business. That's why you got one side and the other trying to work to, to meet in the middle. Are you confident that you'll get a deal? The contract negotiation have to do with your attendance during uh, the first part of off-season program? Uh, I, that I don't know. I don't control any of that. I control if I come or not, but I don't I don't control, you know, how they think about that. Do you view those numbers that others get around the league as benchmarks for your negotiations like Jared Goff getting 53 for you? Well, I'll tell you one thing. The market is the market. If we didn't have a market, then none of that would matter. It'd just be an organizational uh, thing, you know? didn't matter if that guy got paid that because it's up to the organization. So that's what I would say. The market is the market. That's it. Are you confident that a deal will get done before training camp? Uh, I'm confident that a deal will get done. Um, but then again, it's not in my control. Um, you know, it's, it's really up to both sides meeting in the middle with this. You're a passionate and emotional guy. Is it difficult for you to separate the two things out there? You know, to know Yeah, 100%, 100%. 100%. Uh, for people that, that talk about business is different than personal, sure, like I can agree to some extent, but who you are as a person for what you do business and personal is who you are with how you do everything. That's how I see it. That's how, that's just how I look at it. And if not, like if you can be two different people at once, like, hey, by all means, you can do that. But to me, that's just not how I am. I've, I've always found that finishing quote from Tua, who did not have to talk to the media, but clearly wanted to set the agenda for this contract negotiations, which is going to probably take another six weeks, if not up until the beginning of the exhibition season, if not up until the beginning of the regular season. But that final quote hints to me that there's some frustration between himself and the organization. Tua is a stand-up guy, stand-up individual. If you have a problem with Tua, more than likely the problem is you. Now, Here's the issue and, and a topic that I'm talking, I'm, I'm writing about in a Miami Herald column. If you say you love somebody, you want to propose, you want to marry them, where's the ring? And that's where the Dolphins organization is. They say they love Tua. They say they want to marry him, but they have not been willing or able to purchase the ring and then present it to him on one knee. Uh, so that's where we are. We're at a standoff. Obviously, the, the franchise has options, and I do believe that the Dolphins have the leverage in this situation because they can technically make Tua play on the fifth-year option, just like they made Christian Wilkins play on the fifth-year option, and then they can tag him for not just one but the next two years. But when you do that, you're making ultimately a financial commitment of $117 million in terms of the fifth-year option for $23 million, franchise tag year one for $43 million, franchise tag year two for more than, which is going to be a 20% increase for $51.6 million. When you do that, you are cap strapping yourself and not making it very easy to improve the roster or extend players or to add talents to make your team better. So that's not exactly an ideal route to go. However, if the Dolphins organization said we need Tua to prove himself some more, it is a route that they can make. However, what you learn with Christian Wilkins is there are consequences to that. So it'll be interesting to see how this storyline plays out. I think we're probably going to be sitting on this on a weekly basis, if not for the next six weeks. Maybe this is a situation that doesn't come to a head until the regular season. Um, it seems like Tua is dug in on getting a contract that is compensatory with what his peers are making. And if his peers, which are Jared, Joe Burrow, Jared Goff, Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts, now Trevor Lawrence, are all in the $50 million a year club, uh, Tua is making the argument, why shouldn't he be? And it'll be interesting to see where the organization is and where the franchise is in terms of what they're willing to offer. To me, I would hope that a contract of $150 million is on the table for, for Tua. And when I say that, I'm talking about guaranteed money, which is the only real money that matters. Now, if it's not, um, uh, there, there would be a problem, and which is probably why you haven't seen a deal get done. 
if I'm Tua, I'm probably not signing anything that doesn't guarantee me $170 million. So that $20 million, $20 million gap is where I believe that the impasse is. And it'll be interesting to see if both sides meet in the middle or if they don't.